not talking comedy class. Just a quick video for you guys now in terms of just a couple of things that I've started to notice with the iPhone 5 in terms of how it is integrating with Google and Google's app kind of ecosystem. Um, and just the amount of information I have on my iPhone made by Apple that I actually use and that I know a lot of other people use in terms of Google and Android, etc. and so on. Not necessarily Android in terms of the software, but in terms of the actual apps and things that you get on Android, how many of those have now trickled their way through to the iPhone um, and also just in terms of how Google have maybe kind of um, not overtaken Apple um, in certain aspects, but the software that they are putting on the iPhone 5, how I personally think that some of it is better than what Apple are offering. For instance, Maps, I'm also using the Gmail application as well. Um, so we'll get to it now and just have a quick look over a couple of things and just a, the full list of apps that you can get made by Google for the iPhone that may be more beneficial to yourself than what Apple have to offer. Okay, so let me explain what I meant a second ago when I was talking about all the apps that you can get on iOS that belong to Google, basically. Now, if you look here, I do have my iPhone 5 running the latest software of iOS 6. Um, and you'll notice that in a minute I'm going to show you a couple of apps from Google that are better than what Apple is offering. Now, first off, I'll let you know I've also got a, a 64 gig iPhone 5, so you can get, see that I've got it full of load of apps on all the different pages and things that I've got here got about eight or nine different pages along the bottom. I actually deleted about 150 apps the other day, so this is a very limited version to what I used to have. And if you look here on my main page, I do have a Google folder. Uh, now in this, what you would expect, obviously it has all the Google apps that I use in terms of obviously day-to-day -day things, or just in general that I prefer using compared to maybe what Apple are offering. Now we're just gonna go through and kind of have a look at each one individually to kind of see what's good about it, what's not good about it, and if it is worth using. Um, now we're going to go from kind of what I consider to be worst to best. Um, so we'll start off not necessarily worst in terms of that it's a, a, a bad app or uh, that it doesn't do its job, but that I don't really use it that often. And that is Google Translate, which we do have down the bottom here basically. So if we click on the Google Translate app, it does open up the application. I'm not sure if you can see because I do have the black iPhone 5, but it has not been optimized yet for the kind of 16 by 9 display. It's still the old kind of 3.5 inch screen size. Now the app itself is very good, like I say, it's not that I uh, don't think it's a good app, I just don't use it that often. And um, you can see here that along the top it's got kind of like translation options for different languages that you want to either speak to the phone or that you want it to translate to. Uh, I've popped in an example here of how are you in English, and if you can see just up there in the top kind of corner, I've translated it to Chinese, uh, kind of a simplified version, hence what the S is for. Um, and obviously the app itself, like you see, it's kind of put it into the Chinese language in terms of how you would kind of um, write it or how they would read it, etc. And it does also have here how you would also say it in the language. If you look over to the side there, it does have a kind of button that you could use for actually speaking out loud the actual word, basically. So if we just have a look now, if I press that button, it says it in the uh, Chinese language, how are you basically, well hi, how are you? Um, and also there is the option as well up the top there to kind of speak into it um, using Google's quite good voice recognition and it will pick up what you're trying to say and then translate that back as well. So really good for if you are on a for instance on holiday and you do need maybe to order a beer for instance, you know how to do it because you can do that and actually speak, well not speak or you can you know have it play it to them or you can read it off yourself if you want to have a bit of a challenge basically. Now, next up in terms of app-wise, we do have Google Drive. Um, again, I don't really use this that often, if at all, because I am mainly an Apple guy. I'm in the Apple ecosystem. Everything for me is in iCloud, not necessarily here. But you can use it in terms of kind of keeping folders and things on here, um, some information things. Um, it has got a couple of saved things on here from quite a while ago. I mean, we got December of last year, for instance. So you can see that I don't really use it that often. There is one on there from September of this year. So I might have to have a look at that because I forgot that that was in there. Um, but it's just a kind of way of keeping everything organized in terms of all your folders. Uh, not folders, they're uh, kind of fair. Uh, data and things and your kind of word documents if you kind of use in Google Docs and things it kind of has everything on there so again that's quite good and also you can see that from the bottom just down here I do obviously have my name in it because all of these Google apps because obviously it's not an Apple application doesn't kind of sync everything you do have to log into each one of these individual apps with all your Google information if you want to kind of sync everything across all the apps or just kind of have your data there basically 
Um, next one that we have is Google Currents, which is a newsreader, which obviously uh, Barry from Copy the Glass kind of talks heavily about. He really does like it. For me, though, I'm not a fan. Only reason being is because the Android version is so much better. And again, it hasn't been optimized for the iPhone 5 screen as well. Um, but simply put, it's just a kind of newsreader app. And you can add kind of different stories or different kind of categories or here I've got the different websites and things that I kind of have a look at and things. If we just click on one now, you'll see it kind of takes you to um, a kind of flipboard view, but in my opinion, not as good. And you can kind of flick through the different articles and things here. Um, and obviously, if you do want to kind of click on a specific article, if you just tap on it, then it kind of brings it up bigger here. We're in the video section things. Um, now you can kind of star stuff and kind of save things to offline reading. But again, it's not as nice in terms of style-wise and in terms of how it looks compared to the Android version, which Barry took a look at not too long ago, basically. So that's Google Currents. Um, next up, um, we're going to be having that, a look at Google Shopper. Obviously, you can now go on to google.com and obviously they've got a specific shopping center for searches and things. So again, it's exactly what you would think. It has a very good search function. It is optimized for the iPhone 5 screen, which is really nice. It's got specific things here at the moment, obviously coming up to Christmas, gifts for her, gifts for him, gifts she'll love, etc. Or you can use their voice search, which again, is super good in my opinion. Uh, if I just give you a quick example now, for instance, of maybe something that I am looking for. Spec candy shell for iPhone 5. So there I typed in that I wanted to look for the spec candy shell for the iPhone 5 and as you would expect it brings up all the information in terms of where you can get it from. Uh, it's got the different colours etc. And then if you do click on one, for instance this top one as it's just at the top, you can click on it there and it tells you exactly where you can get it from, save to the shopping list etc. The price, what it is, a brief description. And down here you got the online shops, so where you can get it in terms of uh, ordering it offline. And then it also has the related product as well. Now. It usually does also have the local areas in terms of places near me because it does have location and things and it knows where you are. But for some reason it's not showing up even though I know you can get the spec candy shell at my local Apple store which isn't too far away. So that's Google Shopper, like I say, a very simple app but also very useful at the same time. Now next thing that we're going to be having a look at, again something that I don't necessarily use that often as well, is the Gmail app because I use the standard iOS app just because I find it a bit easier to sync everything across basically. Uh, but if we have a look now at the Gmail app again, it does have a very very nice interface. I will give them that in terms of the uh, kind of information, how it is displayed and everything. It is very nice in terms of you've got your inbox as well. Side across to the side it's got all your kind of, uh, you know, kind of starred or you've got your outbox etc. Any saved messages etc. So again really nice and again if you look across the top here, you can sign into multiple profiles that have kind of multiple email accounts on there as well. So again that's a very nice option as well. And just the actual app itself has got very nice kind of, um, not animations but kind of the actual design of it is very nice. Obviously you can compose everything as well. So it brings up just a standard kind of compose you would see and maybe some other email clients. Um, and then obviously if you do kind of click into an email, it kind of just brings everything up. It does have like a big little kind of green logo with either the uh, picture of the contact or it has an A here because obviously it's from Apple, this one here, because so it gives you the kind of alphabetical order. Uh, obviously you can delete information as well, gets rid of it. Or if you want to just press the little button on the side there, it brings up some options down the bottom to do what you need to as well. So again, a quite nice app. Like I said, you know, I use it mainly for kind of a separate account or just for videos like this, for instance. So that's Gmail on the iPhone 5. It is a nice app, but I personally prefer the Mail app for iOS. You're maybe kind of slightly thinking different. And the next up we have Google+. Plus. Um, which I personally have not been on for a very long time, but it has had a very nice redesign. You can see here that Barry posted something about seven hours ago. He is feeling great apparently, so that's nice to know. But obviously it's got here all the information in terms of your circles. You bring down the top here, has a list of your circles, um, obviously, you know, your friends, family, acquaintances, etc. Um, and the actual design itself is very nice. As you can see, kind of how things kind of pop in and things, it is very nice. I do really like that. Um, but again, like I say, with things like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc., it's just another thing really that you have to um, kind of update basically. So you can select your location, um, say where you are and things. So again, that's quite nice if you wanted to kind of share your location with friends, etc. Um, if you want to put up links and things as well that you can share, that's also an option. 
and also there's a little compose button if you just wanted to write something so again it's got a little sidebar of all the things that you can do all the things that you want to look at um so again it is a very nice app you know i'm not gonna lie i prefer maybe the layout of this compared to maybe facebook in terms of how fast this runs and the information but i don't necessarily use it because 99% of all my friends and colleagues etc are on Facebook but that's a quick look at Google Plus um, now next up is probably the not the best but the most useful app and that is just plain Google search um, obviously you can do it in Safari if you want to but I prefer this because it kind of gives it a bit more of a uh, there's certain things that you could do here that is maybe a bit better for instance so as you can see here it's a lot like the website in terms of the fact that it has kind of maybe whatever daily or weekly kind of graphic is on for the Google logo. I do like that seeing that on the actual app is very nice. Um, and again, it's just very quick if you want to search something. So again, if I just search, for instance, iPhone 5. Search. Again, brings up all the information exactly as you would expect it to. Along the bottom here, you do have kind of different uh, tabs. For instance, if you click on images, it does just that. Brings up the images and things. So again, it is a very nice app. And I personally prefer it than going to Safari. And that may be a bit more clicks to get it from the actual app itself. But I personally prefer it. And obviously, I use it on a regular basis to kind of search for things and, and all that. But, uh, you know, very nice app. Brings back the homepage here. Again, it does have voice search as well so again if i search here spec candy shell for iphone 5 again it gives a very um kind of google now response um and if you actually look if i just kind of search something else you just look along the top it kind of pre-thinks what you are going to be saying so again if i just press the exact same button but search for something else uh, maybe assassin's creed 3 which is in the background assassin's creed 3 for xbox 360 so again, you can see that it finds the information very quick, very nice. Um, and I've had a quick play around with Google Now on one of my colleagues' phone, and personally, I do like it. And this takes a lot of things from Google Now, but just uses it in the search function, basically, which is, you know, I like it a lot. Um, you do then have Google Chrome, obviously the web browser. Um, again, very nice app. I haven't actually used it because I recently got a new iPhone because mine broke but we're not going to talk about that now um, but again it's just a very nice web browser and it would expect you know it works exactly as you would expect it to basically so again if I just type in here www. Uh, just do copy the glass for instance and then just press go it obviously goes there it just works exactly as a web browser and uh, not too much thrills basically my internet is running extremely slow at the moment so there is a bit of lag so i do apologize for that but again very nice app in terms of just the the speed but again i do prefer safari again it does have landscape view as well so again it's got kind of all the information as well so again it is a nice app but not one that i may be using on a regular basis but i i do like it and like i say it's just a kind of web browser basically i don't necessarily prefer it because on uh, for instance a mac for instance uh, i do use chrome on the mac because it does run a lot faster than safari on the mobile version though you may not notice the difference as much and i've got bookmarks synced across both so doesn't make a difference to me um, next up we do have um, youtube which obviously a lot of people maybe don't know that for instance youtube is owned by google but it is so again here it's got all the uh, kind of uh subscriptions that you're subscribed to for instance it is optimized for the iphone 5 as well if you go into the little sidebar here it's got who you are subscribed to obviously you can log in as multiple people again and again the good thing about this is the fact that it does uh videos of uh 16 by 9 basically if i just turn this down now real quick so again you can see the layout here it does have kind of like looks just like the website so you've got about the video what the video is actually about this is my google maps for iphone that i was looking at the other day suggested videos that are similar for instance and comments you can keep watching the video in the background which is very nice it does have ads in it now which you can skip just like you do um obviously on the pc version and then again you've got everything like thumbs up thumbs down if you want to share it and things like that and also in landscape view like i mentioned it does take up the full screen because obviously it is now optimized which is very nice um and like i said i do really like it. i use it on a regular basis obviously with our youtube page and things um so again very nice app very useful um next up is a new app that i think only got released today i may be wrong it may have been yesterday and that is youtube capture um again a very simple app um, and all it basically does is allows you to 
take and upload videos to YouTube very easily using your phone basically. Um, one thing that I really do like that I think Barry will appreciate the most is it does have that little logo in the middle of your video. Now you can film the video like that if you want to in portrait mode but everyone knows that videos look a lot better on the web if they're in landscape. And you can see there obviously it dulls everything out, turns to the side, brightens up the screen and kind of makes it a bit easier in terms of what you're going to be recording and things like that. So there are some basic settings and things you've got here. Obviously who you are logged in at, uh, where you're gonna be posting to. Landscape lock, you can turn that on or off, rotate to begin recording. So if you want to, you can start the app, turn the phone, and it will just rotate automatically, which I think is very nice. Um, but again, it's just a really kind of simple thing. I'm not gonna go too much into it because I'm gonna be doing a look at this in the next video, which will probably be uploaded straight after this one. And just kind of give my thoughts and opinions on the actual app itself. Um, now last but not least is probably the best Google uh, application that is out at the moment and probably will be for a very long time and I would highly recommend it. I think you got about 10 million downloads in the first 48 hours which is absolutely insane and that is Google Maps for iOS. Now again, not going to go too much into this. I have already done a video before which I'll put in the description down below or I'll put a little annotation somewhere on the screen maybe around here that you can click on. Um, so again... It's Google Maps, like I say, you'll have to watch my previous video for me to go into it in a lot of detail because this video is a bit longer than I thought it would be. Um, but like I say, that's just a quick look at um, applications for the iPhone or for iOS um, from Google. And like I say, there's a lot in there and there's a lot of good stuff that um, not necessarily that you're not going to use all the time. Um, but I mean, for instance, just little things in terms of searching for stuff or getting information things. Obviously, the iPhone 5 does have Siri on it. Uh, if I do a very, very quick test, just while we end this video, I'm just going to do a quick test of searching for, uh, let's just have a look here, Borderlands 2 for PlayStation 3, for instance, using Siri and also using uh, the Google search engine, basically, to kind of see what the difference is and what the speed difference is. So if we do it through Siri first... Where can I buy Borderlands 2 for the PlayStation 3? Searching the web for where can I buy Borderlands to the PlayStation 3? So straight away you can see there that, I'm not sure if you saw, but the actual results there that it's put into even the Google search is where can I buy Borderlands 2? As in not the number 2, but as in I want to go to there. So we have a look here. If you look in the little search bar that it's put in the top, Borderlands 2, the PlayStation 3. So again, it doesn't necessarily pick up numbers that good. I'm not sure if the Google uh, is going to be any better. Let's just have a quick look, shall we? So if we have a quick look now, just really quick. Don't want to go into Chrome. Search. Again, I'll do the exact same thing. So go on the voice. Where can I buy Borderlands 2 for the PlayStation 3? So again, that gets everything exactly correct. Um, obviously, the actual results and things may vary. Well, they'll probably be exactly the same because it goes into Google through Siri. Um, but like I say, there's a couple of things there that are a little bit faster than Siri and maybe Apple need to step up their game a bit. Um, so like I say, I am Michael from Copper V Glass. This is your first look. Uh, well, not your first look. Just a quick uh, overview of all the Google applications that you can get for iOS or iPhone. And I will catch you in the next video.